Hi, this is Dan with Lancaster Archery Supply. Today we're going to show you how to set up an ILF bow. Uh, if you get your package in the mail and this is your first ILF setup or you need some help assembling the bow, this video is going to help you accomplish a setup and show you all the items you may need uh, for an Olympic style setup or even a bare bow setup. Uh, we'll go over some of the key parts of the setup that you're going to get, need. Um, first is probably going to be your riser and limb. Uh, we have an ILF riser here, it's a 25 inch riser and a set of limbs. When you're purchasing a set of limbs, um, you'll notice that the limbs are offered in weights and along with the weight. So you select the weight you'd like along with the length. Um, the length of the limb along with the length of the riser will help determine your overall length of bow. In this case, we have a 25 inch riser and a set of medium limbs. Uh, medium limbs, um, it's indicated here, and on a 25 inch riser will make a 68 inch AMO bow. For this setup, you would also need a 68 inch AMO string. We sell strings by the actual bow length. Um, on the limb as well, it also indicates which is your top and bottom limb. The limb I have here, uh, BTM, stands for bottom. Um, so when we take this limb, packaging, you'll see most limbs have some kind of packaging to protect these from scratching the other limb. So there's going to be a cap of some sort, sometimes it's a plastic cap or foam. You'll remove these from your limb and then install them into the riser. Looking at your riser, um, this is where you're going to install the limb. This is called the limb pocket. Um, the detent of the limb is going to slide into this portion and the force of the limb will actually press up against the limb bolt. Um, the, once you snap the limb into place, I have the bottom limb here, go on the bottom side, the limb will be able to move up and down. Um, this is commonly uh, confused by archers who haven't had an Olympic style setup. They think there shouldn't be this movement. But once you string the bow, the pressure of stringing, the string having tension on the limbs will actually press this limb up against the limb bolt. So you install both your top and bottom limb. And you'll hear a click sound. Once you hear a click sound place, that indicates that the limb is secured into the pocket. Uh, the forks of the limb are pressed up against the limb bolts. As far as the limb bolts for the setup, they have a couple characteristics. They typically have a lock on them. Um, the locks for the limb bolts are on the back side of the bow. Um, this has to be tight for the limb bolt to stay secure. Um, limb bolts will help to adjust your tiller along with a slightly adjust your weight. Typically on most ILF bows, the weight adjustment is 10%. Um, so we have the limbs installed on the bow. Um, the next step from here is we have a bowstring. Um, again, this is a 68 inch bowstring. Uh, this bowstring, the bowstrings that we sell will match the overall ammo length of the bow. When you unpackage your bowstring, you'll notice that the bowstring may need some twists. Um, typically, you don't want to um, be able to put your finger through the string freely. You want to have some twists in the bowstring and this measurement is referred to as your brace height for the bow. Um, you'll notice there's two loops of the bow and there's a larger loop and a smaller loop. Typically the larger loop is placed on the top limb and this will help you when you're stringing the bow to slide the string onto the notch in the limb on the limb tip. So you place this about halfway down the limb and you would add some twists. Typically uh, your right-handed archers have a clockwise uh, twist to the string and left-handed archers do a counterclockwise twist to the string your smaller notch will secure into will secure um, onto the um, limb tip into the notch. So we have the limb on here but the next step is obviously going to be stringing the bow. I would recommend having a stringer. It's going to be a useful tool for you um, to start out stringing your bow. Okay so you have your stringer. You typically put the loop that you're going to slide on your larger loop, typically on your top limb, you'll slide the open part of the stringer. Some stringers actually go on both limb tips. If you go on both limb tips, the smaller cup will go on the one that you're actually sliding um, the string into the notch. The other side typically covers the notch completely. Um, when you string a bow, you typically stand with your feet shoulder width apart. Um, the farther your stance, the easier it makes, the less you have to put. And you also want if it's a model that actually supports cradles in the limb, you want to put this close to the tip as you can reach. And you're just going to pull up with your other hand on the actual middle part of the bow and you'll just slide the limb onto the actual notches of the limb. When it's strung, you just want to ensure that both the top and bottom string is secure in the notch. And typically an archer will 
we'll pop the string, just pull it back and let go about two to three inches to make sure that everything is set as far as your limbs and um, your string onto the bow. Okay, so we have our bow strung um, and some measurements you typically make when you, every time you string your bow, um, you're probably gonna have to measure your brace height. This string stretches or loses twists, it can affect your brace height, which can also affect your bow tune and your accuracy while shooting. Um, a tool you use to check your brace height is a T-square. Um, there's also L-squares, they, they have the same purpose and basically you're measuring from the pivot point of the riser to the bow string and it can also be, it measures two ways. Um, you can measure it from the deepest part of the grip or the center portion of your rear plunger hole on your riser. Um, in this case, uh, you'll have to refer to the owner's manual or consult our customer service uh, tech experts on uh, proper brace height for your bow. This is a 68 inch bow, um, so we're probably gonna have a brace height around a nine, nine and an eighth for this style of bow. Um, so you take that measurement, and then another measurement you wanna make when you're first starting out is your tiller measurement. Uh, you have a top and bottom limb pocket, and your tiller measurement will be made from where the riser limb meet to the string, and you'll measure the distance from top to bottom. Split finger or Olympic style archers shooting one finger above and two below the arrow typically shoot a positive tiller on the top limb. An eighth inch positive is a good starting point, so you have an eighth inch longer measurement than the bottom measurement. A traditional or barebell archer shooting three fingers under may have a different preference. A good starting point is to have both of these measurements at an even position. So you take that measurement, and check both sides, and right now we're just slightly longer on the top, so we're, we'll be okay with that. Um, and now we know that we have this position uh, set. If you do need to make adjustments, you can make those adjustments by loosening the locking bolt uh, that secures the limb bolt and making the adjustments to either of the limb bolts. The next items that we need to install are going to be the uh, rest and plunger. What you typically need to install a stick-on style rest like we have in this case would be um, some kind of paper towel, something to clean the surface of the bow, and some rubbing alcohol. Usually at least the 90% rubbing alcohol or denatured alcohol is preferred. Um, so you just put this on a cloth and you'll rub it on the area that you will install the arrow rest onto the bow. And this is just cleaning the surface to ensure that um, the adhesion of the double-sided tape on the rest will be secure um, to, to the actual riser. Um, some people are afraid to shoot a stick-on style rest, but as long as you clean it, there's no reason why this won't adhere and last a long time for you. Um, so we have a basic stick-on style rest. You notice that there's a hole usually in the stick-on style rest. Some have an opening, um, but the main goal is to make sure that this is placed over top the plunger hole. Typically when installing this rest, um, not all setups, but most setups you're going to put this on the rear plunger hole. Um, you can put it on the front, it just changes, changes the dynamics of the setup a little bit. Um, but typically, most archers are going to put it on the rear plunger hole closest um, to the pivot point of the riser. So you'll take the arrow rest and you're going to align this over top the hole and place it on the riser. You want to make sure that the arrow rest is level. Um, you do have some adjustments in, some, in, in most rest models, so you can change the up and down, but you just want to make sure the, that the actual wire is going to be somewhat level um, so the arrow is laying flat along the wire. From there you have a plunger. Um, the plunger will go through the same hole that you just installed the arrow rest over. And a plunger, the main, main objective of the plunger is to achieve center shot on the bow. And it's also going to have an internal spring. Um, the spring tension um, can change your bow tune. It can also help balance and stabilize the flex of the arrow. Um, so from there, what you're going to do is start with your arrow, get your arrow onto the actual string, and put some knock points on this bow. Another, again, you're gonna need the T-square for another reason, and this is, to set up the knocking height on the string. You have your T-square there. Um, on the T-square there's measurements. Now typically with an Olympic style setup or a bare bow setup, you will run the uh, knocking height an eighth to a quarter inch high. Um, bare bow setups where you're shooting three under, you might be leaning more towards the quarter inch high mark from level on the T-square. Notice the T-square is sitting on the actual wire portion of the rest. 
and it's going to be able to um, give you the measurement, the level measurement, and then you can go up from there. Uh, we're going to set this up for an Olympic style archer, so we're going to go just about an eighth inch high of center. Along with your setup um, to install a knocking point, you can either tie these on or you can use a brass knock set. If you're going to use a brass knock set, you're going to need a uh, pair of knocking pliers. Uh, so just a basic pair of knocking pliers to be able to install this on the string. It's going to be an open end on the brass knock set. And brass knock sets are basically sold in sizes. Uh, for most recurve strings, you're probably going to need the black size unless you have a 14 strand string and under. Then they're going to use the small size, which is the blue color knocking point. We're going to use the knocking pliers to install the knock set onto the string. Like I said, we're going to place this about an eighth inch high of center. Usually get it tight, um, and then once you remove the T-square, you can secure it onto the bowstring. What you want is just this to be a nice round um, edge, meet in the center. Um, it's going to secure it onto the bowstring. So you have a knocking point installed. Some archers can put two. A brass knock set, I typically just put one. They're a little heavier on the string. Um, your arrow, of course, will go underneath uh, the brass knock set and be set onto the bowstring. Okay, from there we're going to be ready to put an arrow on this bowstring and set our alignment of the rest in the plunger. Um, obviously with the knocking set installed, you put the arrow just below the knock point. And um, as far as aligning this, um, you have to consult the owner's manual of the bow or our customer service tech experts. We can walk you through how to align the limbs. Basically what you want to make sure is the string is going down the center of the bow and um, you can either use a stabilizer um, or look down the limbs to determine what the center of the bow will actually be. But you're going to align the string and the arrow down the center of the bow. And from there, you're going to set your rest and plunger. Um, you want the arrow running down the center of the bow along with the string. And typically for a right-handed archer, you set the point of the arrow just slightly offset to the left-hand side. The opposite applies if you're a left-hand archer. Um, as far as the positioning of the plunger, the arrow can set very close to the center, if not the center of the plunger. And what I mean by that, if you're looking from the back, so you look from the back side of the, of the bow, and you're going to want to see the side of this arrow nearly in the center of the plunger. It can be slightly offset to the top or bottom, but as close to the center as possible is typically preferred. And your wire arm from your rest will be underneath the plunger. Along with setting the plunger, on the bow, you also need to make sure that the wire arm for the rest is set properly. Uh, you look at the wire rest, um, it is typically these are magnetic, um, so they're gonna, when you shoot they are going to be able to move, but they'll come back to position after the shot. Um, this is important that you get good clearance and have this set properly, so when you have your arrow placed in the center of the plunger, which you can, on the arrow rest, you can typically move this up and down. If it is not centered, um, you have the ability to adjust that on some models. If not, you may have to slightly bend the wire. Just be careful doing so. Um, you don't want to bend it too much to the point where it would break. Um, but if you carefully do that, you can make sure that you have the arrow down the center of the plunger. But you also want to make sure that this wire is also positioned correctly. Um, the wire will just need to set on the outside, just the outside edge. If you're looking down the bow, you'll just want to barely see the tip of the actual wire rest on the outside of the arrow. This will help you with clearance and ensure that it's not going to impact your shot when shooting. Um, another style of rest can be a bolt-on style rest. Instead of being a stick-on, there's an additional accessory bolt on most ILF risers that will allow you to bolt on a rest that will actually wrap around um, the side of the bow and will have a, a wire with adjustments. They're adjusted the same way. You can change up and down position or left and right position. If you don't have those adjustments, you just slightly have to bend the wire. Um, from this point, Right now we have what could be used as a bare bow setup. Uh, we're going to go a couple steps further and make this an Olympic style bow. Uh, really the difference in equipment, um, this is a very basic, can be a very basic bare bow setup where you have rest, plunger, uh, riser, limbs, and string. Those are the basic necessities that you need as a bare bow archer along with your tools, um, Allen wrench set, T-square, a knocking plier. Um, could be the tools you use along with a bow stringer. Okay, moving into more of your Olympic style setups, um, there's some accessories that you can add on to make this an Olympic style bow. Typically you have what's uh, a sight, stabilizers, 
along with a clicker. Uh, when you get your riser, your riser is going to typically include an owner's manual um, and some additional accessories. You may have Allen wrench sets to make the adjustments on the bow along with uh, either a plate or cylinder. Um, and what this is, is it's called a clicker extension. You'll see that there's either going to be a screw hole here to an ex a put a clicker extension on, or there's a cylinder coming out of the front of the riser. And what this does is it allows you to use the, either a riser mounted clicker um, as to the bow, and this is considered basically the strike plate, the portion that makes the click. When that clicker hits there, it's going to indicate that you're ready to shoot your bow. Um, so you do have a clicker extension that can go on to an Olympic style riser. Um, this typically extends just over an inch or around an inch uh, out in front of the bow. You'll have a sight. Um, this is a standard Olympic style sight, uh, very adjustable sight. You move your left and right, change from different distances. Um, they usually have an extension that's removable and the uh, mounting bracket will actually mount to the sight holes on the bow. And this is a standard measurement so any recurve um, sight will be able to adapt to any ILF riser. You simply use, you'll need an Allen wrench set of course to install most of these items onto the bow. But you simply just secure this onto the bow and you have your sight block set. Now moving on to your actual bow sight. Uh, you'll notice on a bow sight, in, in this case, there are several mounting holes that you can adjust uh, and put this onto your bow. Um, just it, This is more what distances you can like or the actual image that you like with the sight aperture. It's personalized to the setup, so you're just going to make sure that each time you put your bow together, you have this in a, cons in a consistent position. And you'll secure that onto your bow sight, and we have the sight installed on the bow. Now for entry level archers that might be doing, going through a tuning process or don't know their exact draw length or trying to learn new form, you might want to consider having a longer arrow for your setup. In that case, you can use what's called a extended clicker. This is a slicker clicker. It can mount to a sight and allows it to extend out in front of the bow. Um, this gives you a lot more of a chance so when you have a clicker that is attached directly to the bow you're looking at a specific range you want the arrow to be cut to. If you're not sure of that or you need to make some changes to your form, an extended clicker is a great option where it gives you a lot of adjustability where you can put the um, actual clicker on the bow sight and you don't need to be as precise when you're cutting your arrow. So to install that, we'll just simply take it over the sight bar. Typically, a model like this will have several jam blocks um, that do secure to it. Okay, and we'll place that secured on so it's nice and stable. And this will give you ability to move it up and down. This model here is nice because it does have particularly some adjustment along with the strike plate. So basically when your arrow passes, it's going to make the click sound. And you can either do a sight mounted, or if you know the exact draw length and arrow length you need your, bow, your arrow cut to, you can install it on the riser and use a very similar clicker that just installs on the uh, clicker bushing. From there, uh, we're getting pretty close to having a setup. This can be a setup. Um, starting out, you may not use stabilizers, but a stabilizer may be a good accessory to add to help you hold steady, especially if you're shooting outdoors or if you're looking to just have a steadier aim while you're shooting. This is an item called an extender. It's an accessory, a personal preference whether you need an extender or not, but what an extender does is it puts the weight forward on the bow. When you shoot, it gives the bow direction. You see a lot of Olympic style archers, when they shoot, their bow will twist around. Um, this helps bring out the mass weight out to the front and helps uh, to have that bow have direction towards a target when you release the arrow. Another item for a stabilizer setup would be a V-bar splitter. And that can be connected to the extender. And typically it has an eye bolt, uh, which will help you secure this onto the actual extension of the bow. And usually use an Allen wrench, secure that, and you just want to make sure it's somewhat level. When installing, you're just going to make sure that the uh, V-bar bracket is level onto the bow. 
And all of these are threaded 5 16 24. Um, so any Olympic style setup or any stabilizer setup we have um, for the mounting bushings, it's all going to be the same thread count, so you don't have to worry about it not being compatible. Uh, your V-bars will simply screw into each side. Into the front eye bolt, you're going to install your long stabilizer. Typically your stabilizers will have either a dampener or weights at the end or a combination of both. Um, you just want to make sure that your stabilizer weights, if you do get additional, um, you're matching the thread count um, that you need for the particular stabilizer that you're using. But with everything installed, this is what your Olympic style bow should look like when it's completed. Um, so this is a full Olympic style rig um, and going to be a very common choice for somebody getting into archery or even looking for an intermediate setup. This will be a great way to give you all the accessories that you need to go along with your Olympic style setup. Other items that you might want to consider looking at an Olympic style bow like this, you're probably going to need a carrying case um, along with a finger tab, arm guard, possibly a chest protector and quiver. Um, there's several types of carrying cases. Usually the backpack style cases are great to go from the shooting range um, to home. If you're looking to travel, you may want to consider a airline approved case or a larger case for airline travel. This has been an overview of a setup of an intermediate Olympic style setup. Uh, if you have questions, please don't hesitate to contact our customer service tech experts. We can help walk you through all of these steps and answer any questions that you have about setting up your Olympic style bow. If you like this video, please give us a thumbs up. If you'd like to see more, please subscribe to our YouTube channel. And if you have any additional questions, please visit LancasterArchery.com.